in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, and all other things shall be added unto you. In fact, the price that was paid for sin is the same price paid for your health and is the same price paid for your material prosperity. In Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 4, see the way the Bible puts it. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. In verse 5, it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. So you see that same price paid for your sins is the same price paid for your healing. Peter reiterated it in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. He said, by his stripes you were healed. And Paul came back to add the third layer. In 1 Corinthians 8, 9, he said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The same grace that brought salvation. The same grace that brought healing. He said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he became poor that you and I might be made rich. And if you study the context of that scripture, he wasn't talking about the soul. Because Paul was talking about the church in Corinth. And the emphasis was about material resources. So he was talking about our material resources. So it's the same grace that deals with sin, that deals with sickness, and deals with material prosperity. So as far as God is concerned, he deals with poverty with the same severity with which he deals with sickness. And he deals with sickness with the same severity with which he deals with sin. The problem with a Christian is that when it has to do with sin, he puts on all his guard and he fights it with all his faith. But when it has to do with sickness, he lowers the, he lowers the standard. When it has to do with poverty, he lowers the standard. And that's why we are where we are. And so the emphasis of the teaching tonight is to let you know that you must prosper. Not just in your soul, but in your body and in your circumstances. But there is a protocol. Look at the first man that God created. In the garden of Eden, God gave him everything. He had relationship with God. He had health. He was working in divine health. And then he didn't have any lack. That is God's plan. So God wants you to grow in your relationship with him as much as he wants you to be healthy, as much as he wants you to have impactful relationships, and as much as he wants you to walk in material increase. Adam had it all. When he fell, he didn't just lose his relationship with God. He also lost everything. He lost health and he lost material resources. He was kicked out of the garden because the thing is a full package. God does not give one and leave one behind. When he gives one, he gives all. And when you lose one, you lose all. This is why many people who are burning for God, at some point they become frustrated. You know, some people think, oh, this thing, we are spiritual men. You are joking. When you talk, they say salvation is free. Try to take it to somebody and see how heavy it is. We are going to Kujé for a crusade. Those who will answer the altar call will say salvation is free and they are correct. Now, ask us who will take it there. We will tell you that the thing is expensive. Number one, Jesus paid the price. Number two, it costs millions to bring it here. This is why you cannot but prosper holistically. And this is why it's God's agenda. Some people say Jesus' death has nothing to do with material prosperity, that Jesus didn't come to prosper us. Really? If Jesus didn't come to prosper us, why then does he expect us to give for kingdom advancement? Where will we get it from? Would that be fair? If God has nothing to do with our prosperity, why will he expect us? The Bible said, cry out loud, Zacharias 1.17, and declare, my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. How does God expect us to take the kingdom to nations, to systems, to the whole earth, and to every generation if he has no system of prospering us? Do you think that gospel is correct? If we are handicapped, how can we advance kingdom? Whereas the Bible clearly states, it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. Proverbs 10.22 and added no sorrow to it. Paul was speaking in Philippians 4.19. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches 
in glory by Christ Jesus. So through Christ, God supplies all your needs. Is your financial needs not part of your needs? How many? Some of you need financial need. Has have financial need more than every other need. Do you know how many things you have used money for only today? So you cannot deny it. It's hypocrisy to deny it. And it is captured in God's plan. 